Remember when flying was part of the vacation? You'd dress up to travel, look forward to an enjoyable meal, and overall get ready to start your trip nice and refreshed. It seems like flying is more Lord of the Flies now versus Eat, Pray, Love, and a lot of that comes down to good old fashioned manners. So if you haven't flown in a while or just want some ammunition for dinnertime debates, put your seat in the upright position, buckle up, and let's have a crash course in etiquette, which starts the minute you step foot in the airport. The first etiquette checkpoint we're talking about is security. You can boil our first tip down to two words, be ready. First, empty your reusable water bottle or coffee mug before you get in line. That may seem obvious, but it's amazing how often we see people pulled aside in line to throw away whatever is in their drink containers. A lot of times now they even have a dedicated trash can for liquids, so there's really no excuse. After getting your ID and boarding pass checked, put everything that was in your pockets into your personal item bag. That means your hat, jacket, belt, phone, and anything else you'd have to take off should be in your bag before you get to the bin so you don't hold up the line fumbling through your pockets. We always recommend putting any loose items in a dedicated bag so that you don't accidentally leave things behind, and you can't always count on a bin being there. Some TSA pre-check lines don't even have them, or some regular lines only have the really small bins, which I recently experienced, so you have to be ready to put any items in your personal item, carry-on, or sling. Before hitting the conveyor belt, you should loosen your shoes so the people behind you don't have to wait for you to pick apart a double knot. We prefer wearing slip-on shoes or elastic laces that don't have to be retied after you make it through security, but we understand that it's not always possible. If your shoes will take longer to put back on, step aside after grabbing all of your items so other travelers can continue to pass by. Most airports have benches right after you get out of line where you can sit and put your shoes back on, but I usually just find a wall and hang out there for a minute or two while I get myself situated. That's also when I consider connecting to the airport Wi-Fi, though they often require my personal information. And the more I give it away, the more spam calls and emails I seem to get. But that hasn't happened as much lately thanks to Incogni, this video's sponsor. Before signing up, my phone would occasionally explode with calls and emails from people I didn't know. That's because some companies sell your name, phone number, and email address to a data broker who then sells it to other companies. Plus, massive data breaches put my information at risk. Since we've been working with Incogni, they found my information on more than 400 sites and removed it from nearly all of them. Doing that myself would be a full-time job even if I knew who to contact, but Incogni reaches out to data brokers on my behalf and then handles any objections. It's easy to use too. Just sign up with the email you want spam removed from and Incogni does the rest. They're giving Packhacker viewers a 60% discount on an annual plan when you use code Packhacker at the link in the description below. Get it individually or sign up for a family and friends plan to share the subscription with four more people. Now that you've made it through security, hit the restroom, and refilled your water bottle, there are a lot of other places in the airport where people could probably use some more manners. If you're watching a movie or working remotely while waiting for your flight, you'll probably want to charge your device too. We get it, you're not always guaranteed a plug on the plane. But wall chargers can be super bulky, and blocking other plugs with your brick is not very nice. You have a few options. Either be sure to use the bottom plug on the outlet, leaving the top free for smaller phone chargers, or bring a wall charger with extra outlets and offer to share with your fellow travelers. When powering up your phone or tablet, we recommend bringing a portable charger instead of plugging in. You'll have more freedom to sit where you want, and you can recharge your battery bank when you reach your destination. Speaking of finding a good seat, don't sit in any spots that are reserved for those with special needs if that doesn't apply to you. There may be a reason someone needs to be next to the gate instead of a row back, and you don't want to use that seat just for convenience when someone else needs the accommodation. And when it's time to line up, don't push past people who are already at the front just because you're faster. It won't make a difference if you get to your seat one minute quicker, but you could make someone else feel terrible. When it comes to kids, they can feel super cooped up on a long flight, so it could be tempting to try and get some of that energy out ahead of time. That's fine, but try to avoid them running around at the gate. Some airports have play places where a kid can be a kid, but if yours doesn't, there are still plenty of ways to tire them out. You can walk around and look at all of the interesting stores and restaurants, take a ride on the tram from one end of the terminal to the other, and then walk back to your gate, or even trek to a faraway restroom just to tire them out. Many airports have interesting fountains to look at or pianos to play or listen to. You just have to explore and seek out the entertainment. Speaking of children, don't be like one lining up for recess when it's time to board. Obey the cardinal rule of travel and don't crowd the gate. I'm going to say it one more time. Don't crowd the gate. It won't get you on any faster and it can actually slow the boarding process if it's harder for the people who are supposed to be getting on the plane to get through the scrum. If you're anxious to get on, you can pick a seat at the gate that will put you near the end of the line. That way, when your zone is called, you can pop up and slip right into line, and you'll actually just be the first person of your later zone. Now that we're on board, it's time to talk about etiquette at your seat. 
It starts with seat selection, as in if you need a specific seat, do what you need to do to get it before you even get to the airport. If you know you like to stretch your legs or use the bathroom frequently, get an aisle seat so that you don't have to ask your seatmates to get up and move every time you need to leave the row. If you're traveling with a child, book seats together and bring proof that you did. Since it sometimes costs more to choose seats together, the U.S. Department of Transportation is trying to get those fees eliminated if you're traveling with a child younger than 13, but it's the parent's responsibility to book together for now. Sometimes there's a mix-up and seats change without you knowing, but if the airline gets it wrong, other passengers may be more sympathetic to switching if you show them you tried. And depending on your kid, you may not even need to sit with them if they're a preteen or older. They'll probably be fine without you. If you didn't plan ahead and feel like you need to sit with your kid, you can ask another passenger to switch with you one time. If they say no, politely thank them and move on. If you don't book specific seats, pack enough activities to keep your child entertained throughout the flight or set them up with in-flight entertainment before the plane takes off. Remind them not to kick the seat in front of them, although that's good advice for grown-ups too. I've been on a ton of flights where someone behind me will use my seat back as leverage to pull themselves up, which just yanks me around, or they'll put their knees up and as they shift, it bumps me too. So it's not exclusive to kids. So before you think we're being too hard on parents, we also have tips for the child for you as well. Keep your thoughts about how you feel about crying babies to yourself and refrain from looking over at them every few seconds. Trust us, the person flying with a cranky child is probably doing everything they can to get them to stop crying, but there's probably nothing they can do. They already feel bad about irritating everyone on the plane, so there's no reason to pile on and make it worse. It's not only kids who need to learn etiquette. Many of us can use a reminder to greet the flight crew upon boarding and to take out headphones during the safety demonstration. If you do keep them in, at least turn the volume down and pay attention to what's going on around you. Don't be the flyer who needs a personal reminder to stow your laptop, put up your tray table, or to put your bag under the seat in front of you. Before you board, grab everything you need from the bag you put in the overhead bin before putting it up there too, because it's dangerous to block the aisle to open up a suitcase or a large travel backpack to get another book or an extra layer. When putting a bag overhead, make sure that you or someone in your party can get it up there without help. It's not the flight attendant's job to heft it over their head into the overhead bin if you're perfectly capable, and they might not even be allowed to depending on the airline's rules. Now, let's take a second to talk about plain odors and how you can help keep things smelling as fresh as possible. First, do not eat smelly food on the plane where your fellow passengers can't escape it. Stinky cheese, spicy curries, and even some snack chips give off a rather powerful odor that may irritate your fellow passengers. Secondly, be aware of how much perfume or cologne you put on before leaving home because it too can annoy sensitive travelers. Lastly, keep your shoes on. Even if you bring a second pair of socks to freshen up, the smells from your socks and shoes will waft around for a few aisles, so it's best to just keep things covered up until you reach your destination. If you need to recline your chair, look beforehand to ensure you won't bump into the passenger behind you or knock something off their tray table. And put it back up during beverage and meal times, even if you're not eating because the person behind you might be. We'd like to tell you not to recline in general because it usually causes a chain reaction in which everyone has to lean back their seats behind you, but you're probably in good company on a red-eye international flight. When I flew to Bangkok, everybody slept after the first meal, so I didn't feel bad leaning back because everybody else was too. Most people woke up again after breakfast and kept their chairs upright after that point, so I followed suit. Regardless of flight length, don't hog the armrest if you have a window or an aisle seat. Sitting in the middle can be bad enough without losing a spot to put your arms, so just throw them a bone and let them have both armrests since you do still have one on either side of you if you're in the aisle or the window. Oh, and the seat back pocket is not there for trash. Flight attendants come through the plane multiple times to collect your discarded items. That's the time to get rid of it. So otherwise, take it with you when you deplane. If you've received complimentary headphones or blankets on the plane, ask before taking them home. Some airlines wash and reuse those blankets, so they're not necessarily free souvenirs to bring back to your niece. Now, we have a few more tips about being on board. You know we love travel backpacks. They're convenient for getting around hands-free and save you from waiting at the carousel after your flight. But on board the plane, take it off your back and carry it in front of you to your seat. Some of these bags are big, and you may accidentally bump the people in the aisle seats with yours while walking to your seat if you turn without thinking. Plus, you'll have to take it off to stow it overhead when you get to your seat, and this way you don't hit the person sitting across from you as you do. I only keep my backpack on during boarding if I know everybody that I'm sitting in the row with because I don't feel as bad hitting one of them in the face. Speaking of the overhead bin, it's not the place for your personal item bag. If your bag can fit under the seat in front of you, put it there, even if you don't plan to use your allotted overhead space. The same goes for your coat or anything else you don't want at your seat. Just put it in front of you so everyone on board has space for their carry-on. If you stopped at the duty-free to pick up a liter or two of tax-free liquid luck or have something else oddly shaped, 
ask a flight attendant where they prefer you to store it. They'll know if overhead space is at a premium or the best way to stow it underneath the seat. If you're flying with friends, be aware of your surroundings when chatting with them on board. Avoid leaning your head into the aisle since it blocks people walking past and don't crowd neighboring passengers or use any part of their seat as an armrest. Like I mentioned before, that goes for leveraging yourself out of your seat as well. You could pull someone's hair or worse. If you're talking with your seatmate, keep your voice down and try not to chat for the entire 13 hour flight. My sisters and my close friends and I have basically developed a nonverbal shorthand and we use that to communicate when we're on the plane. If you're making a quick phone call before you take off or even at the gate before you board, don't put it on speaker. And if you're watching videos, make sure you use your headphones. When it's time to use the restroom, try to stay in your seat until you see that there's no one else waiting. There's no reason for more than one person to be standing in line unless you're trapped by the beverage cart and can't return to your seat. As you wait, don't stare at a particular person trying to read what's on their laptop or see what in-flight movie they're watching. It's rude. I have a puzzle game that I like to play on flights and I had a seatmate that I didn't know watch me for like two hours, which was a little uncomfortable. The best advice we can give you from the time you leave home until the time you deplane is to just be patient. Manners go out the window when you're rushing, but if you stop to think about others, they should come pretty naturally. Even after making it through the flight, you're not home free yet. Everyone seems to stand up the second that the seatbelt light turns off, but there's no reason to rush to the front of the plane. If you need to deplane quickly to make a connecting flight, talk to the flight attendant before the plane begins its final descent. If the flight has been delayed or there are a lot of people trying to make the same connection, they may make an announcement and let you guys off first. Maybe you're just antsy to move around, and we get it, but don't stand in the aisle while you wait your turn. You'll make it more difficult for other passengers to get their bags out of the overhead compartment, and it doesn't make the line move any quicker. If you've checked a bag, don't crowd the luggage carousel either. Instead, opt for bright colored suitcases or label your bag with something obvious so it's easy to spot in the sea of black, gray, and navy bags. As soon as it comes out on the track, you can wait until it gets closer and then step up to the carousel to pick it up. Even if you dig a more minimalist aesthetic, having a way to pick out which bag is yours will make it easier to spot as it passes by instead of checking every single bag. Now that you've had a calmer and more relaxing flight, it's time to enjoy your trip. Let us know if you have more tips on etiquette for your fellow travelers. We all benefit when everyone follows these unwritten rules. Until next time, thanks for keeping it here at Pack Hacker.